we will learn how to estimate the physical wall distance for a given value of y plus, and how to use Fluent's post-processing tools to check and confirm the y plus values. We are going to learn how to set boundary conditions for turbulence. Previously, we discussed mesh resolution requirements for the different near-wall modeling approaches. These requirements are expressed in terms of Y+, plus, which is a dimensionless quantity. Because the mesh resolution and near-wall modeling approach are closely coupled, we need to choose which approach to use before creating the mesh, and this means that we will have a target value for Y+, plus in the wall-adjacent cells. Now Y+, plus is dimensionless, but the meshing program needs us to enter the actual physical distance from the wall, so that means we need to be able to estimate the wall distance that corresponds to the target value of Y+. Plus. So let's see a quick example of how to do this. Imagine we're going to calculate airflow over a 1 meter long flat plate. The air velocity is 20 meters per second, and it has the density and viscosity values that you see on the page. The Reynolds number for these conditions is 1.4 times 10 to the 6th, so the flow is definitely turbulent, and for this problem, we'll use the wall function approach and try to have y plus equals 50 at the first grid point. To start with, take the definition of y plus and rearrange it so the wall distance y is on the left of the equal sign. We know what value we want for y plus, and we know the fluid properties, so all that's missing is the friction velocity. To get the friction velocity, we need to know the wall shear stress, and this can be found from the skin friction coefficient. For flow over a flat plate, there's a formula for the skin friction coefficient as a function of Reynolds number, which we already know, so we just need to plug that into the formula and work backwards. So the value of the skin friction coefficient is 0 0.0034, which gives the wall shear stress as 0.83 kilograms divided by meters times seconds squared, or in other words, 0.83 pascals, and the friction velocity is 0.82 meters per second. So after all that, we find that y should be 9 times 10 to the minus 4th meters, or approximately 1 millimeter. In Fluent, y plus is based on the distance from the wall to the cell centroid, so if you're using ANSYS meshing or Fluent meshing, you would enter twice this value for the height of the first inflation layer or prism layer. Now, unless you're literally solving for flow over a flat plate, the wall distance calculation we've just done here only provides an estimate, and the actual value of y plus will only be known when the solution is calculated. That means in most cases, it will be necessary to check the solution values of y plus to make sure they're in the appropriate range. In a 3D case, you can display y plus contours on walls. Just choose turbulence and then scroll down near the bottom of the list to find y plus. For y plus contours, I like to unselect node values so I can see the actual solver values on the wall without any interpolation, but many people also prefer node values, so as you get used to working with Fluent, you can figure out what works best for you. If you're running a 2D case, then while it's possible to use contours, most people prefer to use XY plot, so again you just open the panel and find Y plus in the turbulence category and select the wall where you want to plot the Y plus. Now, we are going to learn how to set boundary conditions for turbulence. As we have seen earlier, when you activate a turbulence model, Fluent solves a number of additional transport equations for that model. For instance, if you're using the SST K omega model, it will solve one additional transport equation for the turbulent kinetic energy, K, and a second additional equation for the specific dissipation rate, omega. You need to set boundary conditions for these equations at all inlet boundaries, and you also need to set values at outlet boundaries in case there is backflow. Let's look at an inlet boundary condition panel to see how this works. This is a velocity inlet, but it works the same way for any kind of inlet. The turbulence settings can always be found near the bottom of the panel in the Momentum tab. First you choose a specification method, and then you enter the appropriate inlet values for that method. You can see in the panel that there are four different methods, so there's a little bit of flexibility, and I want to briefly discuss each of the methods so that you know what they are. 
The default method is turbulent intensity and viscosity ratio. Turbulent intensity is a measure of the strength of the turbulent fluctuations. A value of 0.05 means that the velocity of the turbulent fluctuations is 5% of the mean velocity. The turbulent viscosity ratio is defined as the ratio of the turbulent viscosity to the fluid viscosity. The default values of turbulent intensity equal to 5% and turbulent viscosity ratio equal to 10 are reasonable values for cases where you may have no other information about the turbulence at an inlet. In many cases, you will have some information, and we'll talk more about these cases in just a bit. If you prefer, you can still use the turbulent intensity, but instead of viscosity ratio, you can use either the turbulent length scale or the hydraulic diameter. The turbulent length scale is related to the size of the large turbulent eddies which bear most of the turbulent kinetic energy. In a boundary layer, a reasonable value for this input might be about 40% of the boundary layer thickness, which is denoted here by delta 99. The other choice is turbulent intensity and hydraulic diameter, and this is particularly convenient for internal flows, which makes it a natural choice for this model here, where both the inlets are pipes. In this case, the diameter of the large inlet is 10 centimeters, and a small one is 2.5 centimeters. The reason there are choices like this instead of just entering values for k and epsilon or k and omega is that variables like epsilon or omega are often not physically intuitive and they can be difficult to measure. So instead of asking you to enter these directly, Fluent calculates what the value should be based on your inputs of more familiar quantities like length scale or hydraulic diameter. However, you do have the option to specify these values explicitly, and the most common reason for doing so would be when you want to input non-uniform turbulence profiles at an inlet. Profiles like that would normally be obtained by first doing a separate precursor calculation of the flow upstream of the inlet and using those results for the inlet profiles. This can help to improve the accuracy of CFD results in cases where it's desired to perform a high fidelity simulation and the boundary of the computational domain is located very close to an area of interest. You will eventually learn the best inlet values for a given application from experience, but there are some guidelines that might help you when you're just starting out. In the absence of better estimates, here are some values that you can try. Normal turbulent intensities range from 1 to 5%, and anything higher than 10 or 15% would probably be unusual, although there are cases, for instance, if the inlet is located immediately downstream of a turbine or compressor stage, where intensity could be a little higher. For external aerodynamics flows, turbulent intensity is normally 1% or lower, and turbulent viscosity ratio values in the range of 1 to 10 would be common. The default intensity of 5% is a good estimate for turbulence through a circular inlet, and for internal flows, a turbulent viscosity ratio of 10 to 100 would typically be a good value. Finally, if you're uncertain about the sensitivity of your results to the turbulence boundary conditions, it's recommended to do a sensitivity study and calculate the flow using one or more additional sets of boundary values. This is normally pretty easy to do, because you can just start with the previous solution and then change just the turbulence boundary conditions and the solution will normally converge again in a small number of iterations.